Hi everyone, I'm Rincy and I'm one of the contributing editors over at Book Riot. Wallace and I are doing a little bit of a swap this week. I'm making a video for Monday. She'll be back on Wednesday and then next week we'll be back to the usual thing. Okay, so last week I talked about how I was like super stressed out, couldn't figure out how to like get out of my weird non-slump slump and I'm happy to report that I'm slowly getting out of it. So one of the things I saw people talking about is how they turn to like their comfort reads and how they turn to specific genres when they are in these sort of like weird funks or moods or anything like that. And I definitely agree that's like a great tip. And knowing that there are certain genres that work for you better than others is always helpful when you're in like weird reading moods because you can just turn to them to be like a consistent source of goodness. But one of the problems I was having with personally was that I couldn't figure out which genre I was in the mood for because I enjoy reading reading so many different things. I don't have like a consistent go-to or anything like that. There were a couple of things that I knew that I didn't want. So one suggestion when you're in sort of like a reading slump or anything like that is to read like graphic novels or comics. Or I saw people talking about picking up romance novels, which I also considered. But what I realized pretty quickly is that I wanted something that was slightly on the lighter side, but still had a little bit of like depth and bite to it. And that's not to say like all romance novels or all comics are like super superficial or anything along those lines, but there is something about like those styles of writing or those genres that just based on how they're set up, they don't always have the depth that I'm looking for. So I was on this almost mission to try to find books that weren't super heavy, but also had a little bit more meat to them than like general fluffy books. And what I found out is that what I was craving were historical mysteries. So in this video I figured I would talk about some of my favorite historical mysteries, some that I've read either earlier this year or relatively recently. Historical mysteries are one of those genres that can be pretty hit or miss. I mean every genre can be pretty hit or miss depending on, you know, the quality of the writing and things like that, but there's like specific things that I like in historical mysteries. One, I like it when they have like a little bit of a historical feel to it, like the way that it's written and the way that the characters talk have to feel historical. There have been times in the past where I've picked up like either historical fiction or historical mysteries where like the dialogue and things like that feel way too modern and that like really takes me out of the story and takes me out of the moment and things like that because it feels like jarring to know that you're set in one time period but the people in there are talking and acting like it's modern day. Another thing that I like but again has a sort of like fine line is like it can't be super inappropriate. I don't know exactly how to phrase it in a succinct way but basically like in the past racism and the way females were treated and things along those lines weren't always great and so a lot of times when modern authors are writing historical stories, uh, they want to sometimes overcorrect for that fact. And so there is this fine line that you have to walk where sometimes characters are going to do things that in modern eyes are seen as inappropriate, but back then may have been appropriate. So sometimes you might have characters who are slightly more forward thinking and point those things out. And there's sort of a fine line that needs to be walked about the types of things you include and the way that other characters react to them. A lot of times with modern historical mysteries that I've noticed is that there usually is like a main female character who points out the sexism in the things other characters are saying. I've even read some recent historical mysteries that feature characters of color, which I will talk about again in a second, and they also point out the subtle or not so subtle racism that is apparent in these worlds. And again, I enjoy the fact that these things are being pointed out because yeah, people noticed racism back in the day. It was just like more accepted and not that there's not racism today, but you know what I'm saying. That's a sort of a fine line that the characters need to walk, but also like it, the characters also can't be too sort of progressive either to the point where it feels like super unrealistic too. So like, yeah, I, again, it's that fine line of like, having modern sensibilities reading this book, but also realizing that these characters do live in a very specific timeline. So, and of course, the mysteries need to be good too. That's a given. So the first set of mysteries I have to talk about are the Cop Sisters 
series by Amy Stewart. Uh, the first book in the series is Girl Waits with Gun. There are currently I think four or five books out in the series. I'm not completely caught up but I really enjoy it. So this set of books are actually based on like an actual set of sisters who one of them was the first female deputy sheriff. And so in this first book you are following this character named Constance Cop who basically breaks the mold of what a woman should be. She has no interest in getting married. She's taller than most men. She's very like independent and strong-minded. These stories take place in the 1910s and I want to say it takes place in New York. And so the story starts off with the sisters in like a carriage and they get hit by I think it's like a silk factory owner who is very clearly drunk and it's basically like a hit and run and the cops don't really do much about it. Constance wants the guy to basically pay for the damages and this dispute ends up like escalating and he ends up like targeting their family and things like that and yeah it's just like a really strong mystery. This one is a little bit of a slow burn as most historical mysteries are but I just really enjoyed it. It's a really strong novel. The characters are really fantastic, really fun and again there's a whole series of them so you get to follow them for a little bit and this one definitely one that sort of sets the foundation for what's to come in the future. So this is definitely a series that I think you should start from the beginning and work your way forward. But yeah I just again really enjoyed it. All of the sisters in here are like very unique unto them themselves and they all have various characteristics and things like that but they're all really great and yeah if you haven't read the Cop Sisters mysteries yet highly recommend it. One that I read just a couple of weeks ago is A Gentleman's Murder by Christopher Hwang. This one takes place just after World War One in England and you are following this character named Eric Peterkin who has just come back from serving in World War One, and he ends up being able to join this like very exclusive club in London that like his father helped found I believe and it's like this club that's specifically for uh, soldiers and veterans. And so towards the beginning of the story uh, this new member basically gets added to the club and then a couple of days later he's found dead inside of the club. Clearly something has happened and it must have happened with someone who is a member of the club because he was murdered inside the building. And so this one has like the feeling of a very standard British golden age detective novel. So if you are a fan of those you will definitely like this. Um, another thing is that Eric Peterkin is a half Chinese half white character which is really fantastic. And so in this story they very much point out the sort of like underlying racism that's happening in this country during this time period towards anyone of Asian de descent. And it also deals with like PTSD and the trauma of serving in World War One, which I also thought was really fantastic. Again, a little bit of a slower burn mystery novel, but I really enjoyed it a lot. And again, I think it just had a lot of depth because of all of those different elements added in as well as a very strong mystery. All right, and the final sort of pair of books that I want to talk about, although one of them isn't out yet, um, are the new books by Sujata Masi. The first one is called The Widows of Malabar Hill. This one came out back in January, I want to say, and I really enjoyed it when I read it back then. In this story, you are following this woman named Praveen who basically becomes the first female Female lawyer in Mumbai or Bombay and this is based on like the actual first female lawyer. So it's 1920s Bombay and Praveen has just joined her father's law firm and she's working on this case of this Muslim man who recently passed away and he's she's working on like the will for his wives. He has three wives and they all uh, practice purda. I believe that's how you say it. Um, basically they're like secluded from other people and specifically from men and they basically just stay in their house all the time. And Purveen noticed that there's a couple of suspicious things about the will and so she starts looking into it and it turns out his death might have more going on than originally thought. So yeah again this is another one that's like really great because it's set in this very specific time period. Uh, Sujatha Masi does a really good job of explaining things about like Indian culture, Muslim culture, um, and this place in this time without being super heavy-handed about it. And again because it's about this like first female lawyer situation there is a lot of like various sexist things that are pointed out about the culture and the way people treat women especially professional women and things like that. So yeah the reason why I'm bringing that one up specifically is because the book that I'm currently reading is the second book in the series. It's called The Satapura Moonstone um, but this one doesn't come out until next January. Um, I just got an advanced reader's copy of it and I downloaded it as an ebook and that's been the book that has been 
getting me sort of out of my reading slump and made me realize that historical mysteries have been what I've been craving all along. So yes, bringing everything full circle here. <laughs> so yeah, that's everything I have for this video. Leave a comment down below letting me know what some of your favorite historical mysteries are. I know there are so many out there, but I just wanted to highlight a handful of them that I've enjoyed recently. And I didn't even mention A Decline in Profits by Solari Gentile, which I've actually talked about in a previous video, so I'm going to link that one up above. So bonus book for you guys. So yeah, leave a comment down below telling me your favorites. Otherwise, I will see you guys again tomorrow with my new release video. Bye.